Hello everybody, this is Mike with uh, Maker's Outpost again. We've got another teardown video of another laptop. This one happens to be an Acer Aspire 4339 uh, model ZQH. Doing for a friend of mine, a clean up, uh, check over, see about upgrading it. It's a nice old laptop, pretty good shape. So we're going to begin uh, the teardown. So, start by removing... <clears throat> Unnecessary parts are in the way. This is the battery. Now we'll see how we can get the keyboard out if it comes out easily from here. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes there are screws in the bottom that have to come out first. So we're going to test this. But there may be screws on the bottom that hold it in place. So we'll just do the usual, pull the screws and see what happens. Well, these are actually marked. So we'll take a handy dandy note. Where they're going at in the tray. Yeah, you don't use a, a driver bit with too large of a Phillips head or else you end up rounding up the screws. And again, with laptops, I don't recommend using uh, power tools. You don't over torque anything. Yeah, generally I just pop the screws, see what happens. Some laptops will designate screws for keyboard, etc. Some of them don't. Looks like all the short guys are a little larger. This is probably the one for the CD-ROM. This might be a keyboard holder. Now yeah, we'll see about upgrading the RAM, changing out the BIOS battery. Make sure the cooling system is nice and intact and working properly. Do all that wonderful stuff. Four things only got two gigs of RAM, so I'll see if I've got anything I can upgrade it with in my stash of used parts. I like doing 
<clears throat> these teardown videos on different laptops, different uh, products like this. Uh, somebody may want to, may have one they need to fix, or they want to, they're just curious how theirs is built. Back in the day, they used to hide screws up underneath these old labels. They used to be so annoying. Like, they're, they're trying to keep you out of your own product. I think they still do in some products, which I think is ridiculous. You bought it. You paid us all this money, but you're not allowed to work on it. I don't like that attitude. Buy our products from us. In return, we won't let you work on it. Right. Sometimes you can't get other things apart without first uh, getting the keyboard out. Sometimes this is one of the biggest pains in the, in the rear, just getting the keyboard out. Screws holding it if there are. If there were. It's starting to kind of lift up. Gonna do it. <sighs> Keyboards. Guitar pick. Okay, keyboard is out of the way. That was a pain in the rear. It has clips, little tiny clips, the whole very top edge of the keyboard down in here. And there are no screws holding it down. Had it carefully, gingerly. Peel up on the key underneath while I push that to keep lifting it. And once I got it high enough to where I can put my finger on it and just went around it with a guitar pick to help loosen it from the other body clips. What a pain in the rear that was. But this is good. I don't want to disassemble anything. All right. Improperly. Just in case... Uh, some things have connection points which <laughs> you want to break. So okay, that is a space card for SD slot. Okay. Now guitar picks are awesome. You can buy these things at Walmart anywhere really. comes off instead. Let's see here. Okay. 
CD-ROM has to come out. Okay. So you don't just go tearing into things. You poke, you prod. Okay, it looks like the bottom comes off of this. Okay. Just like my wife's laptop. Okay. All right. So you gingerly take your time. <laughs> All the screws. All right. Just take your time. A little dust in here. Only kit looks a little bit dusty. We're going to clean it anyway. It's a good thing. We don't have to tear everything completely apart. Make sure that one's all nice and seated still. Standard BIOS battery, easy to replace. Okay, Wi Fi card. There's only one antenna. It doesn't have the secondary, so the range probably isn't the best. But I will need to fish this out from interesting around the, the cooling system so I can undo it. Yeah, I mean, this is a complete teardown, so I guess I should specify that a little clear, more clearly. I'm just going down as far as I have to do to the work I need to do to this core system. There's the power jack. Yeah, that's the power jack. All right. Wow. We want to route all this stuff around the cooling system. That is crazy. Not really nuts over that, to be honest with you. <sighs> Just one hassle after another. Looks like okay, okay. All right. The power. Okay. That gets to heat out. Okay. Switch back to Phillips head. Okay, it's got an arrow indicating, well, if you can see it, there's an arrow saying this screw has to come out. Or there's a screw here. As opposed to these empty ones with no arrows designating case screws. Who does? Yeah. Is there any other screws holding you down? No. Okay. Cool and kit. One, two, three. Backwards, three, two, one. Okay, pop up the cooling system. Okay. Hold on, huh? I wonder if I can even upgrade the processor in here. I guess that's for a friend of mine. And I have quite the selection of used parts laying around, which I'm going to work on grabbing after I take care of the cooling kit. I clean that off and get the uh, any dust out of the cooling system. Like I always say with a laptop, that is my number one encounter is with the cooling system having dust and dirt and lint and cat hair, dog hair, paper fiber, you name it. This is in the environment, it's going to get trapped up in the cooling kit. Yeah, let me just see if I can re upgrade this processor for him. I'll do some research, see what kind of processor this is. Yeah, what I'll probably end up doing is uh, editing, pausing, you know, stopping the recording and just doing some editing while I do the research on this when I get to it. Also, find my batteries. I think they're up there. In case I can't upgrade the processor, I might as well clean this one properly, do it the right way. Okay. Put the alcohol. Wipe off the excess or as much as I can grab.
shiny. Ooh. Nope. Done. Done. To the coin kit. Small foot screws. Right. I probably have extras from things I've torn apart. Because I can save screws and miscellaneous hardware from laptops that are just unsalvageable. Like bad system boards, etc. I'll save the hardware, the screws. Things like that. Okay, so I got the three little tiny screws out of here. Now let's see how it comes apart next. It probably hinges forward. Okay, it's got like a clasp right here. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to catch that. There we go. Nailed it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the, that is the kind of stuff I talk about here. The kind of stuff I work with. Sorry for all the chair shuffling and stuff, but I want you guys to see that. I'm sure you can see all this dust right here, all this buildup. That. We'll call that is the problem I talk about the most with the laptop. You typically don't see those at the desktop because the cooling fins, the radiator, as you could call it, there's such a wide gap in there. Let me see here. Let me see. Let me find. Here we go. A good reference point. I like to. Uh, my shop has a unique sense of organization to it and I'm constantly in the process of updating and remodeling fixing but a typical cooling system for a desktop this is the radiator the heat sink radiator now you notice how wide these fins are a lot of times you get the buildup on top but it's it takes a lot of time and a really dusty dirty environment for that to happen I've seen computers operate for years without getting a lot of dust up here but a laptop I mean <laughs> this is probably like a year maybe you know it depends it's hard to really judge how much time it took to build this much crud up in this radiator this cooling system but as you can see on its output side there's hardly any gap in there so it'll build up real fast so what I'm trying to do is figure this out. So what I'm going to grab is my cleaning supplies. Which I should have grabbed before I started the video, but I was happy to start working on this laptop. So my cleaning supplies. My handy dandy organizing bins. Which I cannot stress enough. Organizing is the key. Buy these things almost anywhere. These little shoebox size, and they hold everything you need. You can separate everything. Brush. Now, what I like to do is I like to save this junk <laughs> that I pull out of these cooling kits because usually the customer won't you know it's, it's hard to believe that what people what you can find and a lot of customers don't believe like they're like what you found what big dust bunnies in your laptop i got one big piece here yeah yeah <laughs> that's what you're facing that's what's in there that big old dust bunny. There's a lot left behind, but this is this is the bulk of the problem. That big dust bunny right there. <laughs> I give that to him. There you go. It's a gift for you. So then what we'll do is with the cheap one-inch paintbrush you can buy anywhere, dollar store, wherever. Kind of brush up and 
loosen up the heavier debris before we take a you know, can of air. Yeah. When you blow out a cooling kit like this, you want to hold the fan. Just hold it. You don't want the air to free spin it because you can burn it out and ruin them. You don't want to do that. Even though you can pick up a cooling fan for a laptop, for this laptop, probably off eBay for like around 30 bucks, you don't want to have to spend your own money replacing something you broke in the first place. And I hope you're not unscrupulous enough to say, oh, it was broken when you brought it to me. That's, that's just poor business. That's poor business. Get all that out. Get more of that out. Perfect. And there's nothing to keep this from happening again. Just the nature of the laptop. Uh, check out my one video about the cooling system, which I should link in the description. But that is pretty much what it should look like. <laughs> nice and clear, free path for the radiator to work effectively, like in your car. Go ahead and pack your radiator full of mud in, in your car and see how well that holds up for you. So then, with that together, with that done, we'll go ahead and you know, wipe off some of this dust so I don't suck it back in. Anything. All right. We'll do is we'll grab our, clip that back together, grab our little screws. We can put this thing back together. Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah, small screws like this are a pain in the butt to work with. Now, now that's been done, set that aside, come through with a paintbrush and kind of gingerly help break up some of the, the bigger debris. This actually saves you canned air in the long run, to be honest. That's what it really does. Just already breaking the bigger stuff up. So then you're just using the canned air to blast it off the rest of the way. Now one of the things I like to do when I'm already in a laptop is I like to change out the BIOS battery. So, this in and up and up. Okay. BIOS battery pulled. Now one of the things I like to do before throwing these in the trash, just because it's partially paranoia, is cover the contact. I do the same thing with nine volts because I throw away a lot of like small metal pieces, like resistor leads and uh, small electronic pieces and parts as I do projects. And I want to make sure nothing can short circuit these batteries out. Just just as a precaution, I don't know how. I've never actually tested for it or anything, so I don't know. So we get the battery out. I gotta find where my new batteries are. And of course, they're buried under some of my other parts bins. So pardon the noise. As my phone happens to be right next to them as I'm recording. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I organize all my parts in bins similar to these buy them off Amazon, eBay, whatever, but the divided storage bins, I love them. I absolutely love them. So, grab a new battery. Now, honestly, if you're going to do these kind of repairs and work on projects like this, don't. I would recommend going to companies like Mauser, Mauser.com, DigiKey or wherever, and buying batteries in bulk. You can buy them for 20 cents or less. These CR2032s, don't go to the store and pay two or three bucks for them. Don't pay the markup price. Especially if you're going to do this. 
because then you can just kind of offer this as a service as a freebie while you're already in a laptop or a desktop. Just replace the BIOS battery for free. What's a quarter? Your customers will appreciate that, and your friends will appreciate that stuff too. So before I uh, get settled in, I'm going to find my small parts bin. Huh. Oh, right here. So, just another section of parts. And I'm going to see what I can uh, do. I'm going to see. I'll have to do some. I may have to do some research on this, but first I'm going to check out the memory. Probably DDR2. So I may not be able to do anything about it. DDR3. That's only what, like two gig module? Hmm. That's one gig. Let's see if I got anything I can do for this. I can put four gigs. Well, I can miss two, two gigs. A one gig. And I can double this memory capacity. Yeah, I can double his memory capacity, which is better than nothing. Yeah, when I buy memory, I save all the packaging from it. So when I get uh, memory from uh, repair jobs or scrap outs, I have something I can put it back into and store it for later for somebody else. Another job. And a lot of times I just, this extra memory I have, I just give it away. I'll upgrade laptops or desktops, you know, for free as I'm working on them. No, I should have four gigs of RAM and then with a fresh OS install, that's another thing we're going to do because he's complaining about being bogged down with programs he didn't use. Don't need that. So I'll just save this for another repair or upgrade. Alright, so there we go. Upgraded his RAM, replaced his BIOS battery, cleaned out his um, cooling system. And there's probably no chance in heck this processor will fit. It's probably the same speed anyway. Well, that's an i3. I don't think it'll work in this board. I'll check. You know what? Sometimes it's worth trying. This is a seller on. I think um, laptops work a lot differently. No, nope. yeah, three. Yeah, actually dropped in. That'd be the coolest thing ever if uh, that worked. <laughs> Something that I do, I don't recommend um, to just to anybody. We're gonna try power doing a post. Now it might complain, it may not go anywhere without the cooling system engaged. Oh my gosh. Huh. Okay. Yeah, that actually started getting kind of warm. Huh. That's an i3. And this is a general generic seller on.
I'm gonna have to do some research real quick. I am just really curious about this to make sure. Actually, you know, I'm not gonna even bother. We're gonna try it. We are going to try it. Because that's what I'm all about. Shouldn't hurt the rest of the system. If anything, it'll damage that processor. But you know what? I've had that processor for over probably for gone a couple years now. And I don't really care. <laughs> if it gets damaged, it's just sitting in my park box, taking up space when it can be uh, useful for somebody else. Uh, thermal compound, we're going to put this bad boy back together. And. Boy, that was interesting. I never expected that. And that's without doing research. That's why I like just to go for it. Just to do it, you know? Yeah, because you're either going to run into one or one or a couple of things. One, it's just not even going to fit. Pin size, pin layout won't fit. You'll, you'll, that'll be the first step. It, it just won't fit. The next step is the motherboard won't, uh, if it does fit, the motherboard may not recognize it. So I'd be like, okay, what are you going to do? It won't do anything. But this is actually kind of cool. That it actually put, started posting. And we'll see. In, blah blah blah. Unhook the power again so I can feed everything properly. Preview layout. Okay, again, like I've mentioned before, most of these laptop cooling systems are numbered to the order of torquing. So you want to go by that when you're putting everything back in. So you got one right here. Snug it all down. We got two right here. And three right here. Two back here. It designates it. Shouldn't need my guitar mic anymore. That out of the way, click that. Okay, now this is where the fun begins, trying to remember how to feed these wires properly. Which, beautiful beam footage to see to make sure I'm doing it right that's fine because I will I will go back through my video if I have to to make sure I'm doing this right so far that's fed in properly Wi-Fi tape I have my power see why I see why it's fed like this battery compartments right here I get it now all right that's together memory in there it posted an error about that cooling kits hooked up plugged in tied in together 
Blurdy Blars, okay. Sure I'm not missing any small parts. Now, I'm not actually going to secure all of these screws, to be honest. Okay, I hate that. There we go. In fact, I'm not going to secure any. I'm not going to put the battery back in. CD-ROM's not really necessary to have installed right now because I'm going to uh, reinstall the OS via the dump drive. But based on this design, I didn't have to pull the keyboard out, which is great. I'm going to make it accessible still on the bottom. So if I need to, if it just doesn't want to work properly, I can go back to the memory, change, replace the processor with the one that was original. Get your keyboard back installed here. Come on, baby. Come on, darling. Go in there. all right there we go and when i'm all done got everything all reassembled i'm going to clean the case up make everything look all pretty and nice well i mean that's pretty much for the bulk of the reassembly other than putting all your screws back in getting the cd-rom drive uh reinstalled uh other than that, reassembly is is uh, nothing more from here, uh, because I'm the way I want to do this. I'm just gonna work with it like this. Uh, well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, drop comments or whatever. Like the video. Check us out on Patreon and have fun. <laughs>